Hello there, this is Zero Munduluru and welcome back. Now let's look at the next control flow statement which is the switch statement. Switch statement can be used as an alternative to an if statement if the conditions involved are much more simpler. For instance, if the conditions involved include a single variable and only an equality operation, then a switch can be used instead of a if statement. So here is the code from the if statement lecture and here we have the if statement and we can see that there are multiple variables here like age, salary and has bad credit and there are also multiple operators like the different comparison operators like greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, greater than and there is also the not operation. In this case we have to use an if statement but if the conditions involved include a single variable and only an equality operation then we can use a switch statement. Now here is a method that I have written called as get season and it uses an if statement with just a single variable and only an equality operation. Here instead of if we can use a switch. Now what this method does is as the name implies get season it takes month as an input and returns the corresponding season. So month here is of type int which means that month will be in the range 1 to 12 representing the different months and season here is a local variable and based on the month season is set to the appropriate season. So if month is 1, 2 or 3 then the season will be spring, for 4, 5, 6 season will be summer, for 7, 8, 9 it will be rainy and for the last 3 months it's going to be winter and if month falls outside of the range 1 to 12 then we get into the else block and season is set to unknown. Now this particular if statement can be implemented as a switch and it would be preferable if we implement it as a switch statement as a switch statement will be much more readable, it can be concise and it can also be efficient because switch is designed to be efficient and hence it can be efficient. So in this lecture we are going to re-implement this if statement as a switch statement. Now switch statement has been around from Java 1 onwards because it's a fundamental control flow statement and its syntax has been constant from Java 1 till around Java 13. But there are some limitations with the basic syntax and hence in Java 14 the language designers have extended the syntax to include something called as arrow labels and they also introduced a new feature called switch expressions. So that is a switch expression and what we are going to look at today is a switch statement. Switch expression is simply an expression which means that it would evaluate to a value and hence it can be used in an assignment statement or even as part of a return statement and we will look at that in one of the subsequent lectures. Now after Java 14 the syntax has been further extended in Java 21 to include something called as pattern matching. Okay, so there are a series of enhancements in the syntax and maybe there will be more in the future. But the basic syntax has been there from Java 1 onwards for a long time for over two decades and we are going to understand it clearly because that will help us clearly understand how the switch statement works and what the limitations are of the basic syntax. Okay, some basic limitations. And later on we will also look at the extensions, the syntax extensions in, uh, in some of the subsequent lectures. So we are going to start off by looking at the basic syntax in this and the next lecture. Okay, so let's just go ahead and take a deep dive into the switch statement, okay, switch syntax. So uh, let's just comment this code here. Okay, so the if statement is commented out and let's write our switch here. So the switch statement starts with the keyword called switch followed by parenthesis followed by the switch's body which starts and ends with n curly braces and this is called the switch body is called as the switch block. Okay, it's called a switch block and in the parenthesis we will have the method parameter month and it is called as the selector expression. Okay, it's called as the selector expression. Now in our if statement here we have such conditions. Here we will not have the conditions in the, in the exact same way but the conditions would be represented by something called as case statements. Okay, so the, the selector expressions together with the 
case statements will form our conditions. So we have around 12 conditional expressions here. So in the same way, we will have 12 case statements here. Okay, so the case statement starts with the keyword case followed by a case label. The first case label in our case would be one followed by a colon and it can be followed by zero or more statements corresponding to the month of January here. So it can be, there can be no statements also. So this can be considered as the body for the case block, okay, for the case statement. But here we know that we have this particular statement when month is equal to one, where we are setting the season to spring. Okay, and next is for Feb case two, season will be once again spring, case three, season will be spring case four for the month of april season will be summer this time same for case five two and also case six now as you can see this is going to take time so i'm going to do it offline and i expect you to do it offline too okay so let me get back all right, here we have all of the cases and I hope you have also implemented all of these cases. Now, the only missing th uh, thing is the else block in our if statement. So we have the else block comes into play when the month value falls outside of the range one to 12. When it is less than one, that is zero or negative or greater than 12, that is when we get into this block, right? Now, in the switch statement, we also have something called as a default statement, okay? It's also an optional one and we can use it just like the else block there. So if there is a default statement, then we can have only one default statement just like the else block in the if statement, okay? So let's go ahead and write that. So it will be default followed by colon followed by this season equals to unknown. The only difference from the if statement is that the default block need not be the last block. It can be followed by other case statements, although that is not a common convention. Typically, you will see the default statement as the last one. But you can have case statements following the default too. But that's not possible with an if statement. We know that else has to be the last block. Now let's go ahead and run this code. So in the main method, we are invoking this method called get season with the value three, which corresponds to the month March. So that would return the season as spring, which is getting printed here. So let's just do that. But it is printing as unknown rather than spring. So what's happening? So here three is getting passed and month, the selected expression will be three. And so the matching, it matches with this label trees and season gets initialized to spring, but the control moves to the next case block after that. And it's not going to compare with four again, but the statement season equal to summer will be executed. So season variable is getting overwritten here and the control moves to the next case statement and it keeps moving until it hits the end of the switch. Now that is called as fall through mechanism. Okay, it's called as fall through and that's a limitation of this basic syntax which is addressed using arrow labels and that we will see in one of the subsequent lectures. But here what we want is after the statement season is equal to spring is executed which is from the matching case block we would want to exit the enclosing switch. So we would want to break out of the switch and for that we can use something called as a break statement. Okay, and the break statement as the name suggests will break out of the enclosing switch. Now, you will see that we will have the correct output. Okay, spring it is now. Okay, so with the break statement, the control terminates the switch and it will execute the statement following the switch, which is nothing but our written statement. But we need to have this break statement in all of the case blocks. So let's go ahead and do that. As you can see, it's a tedious process 
And so let me just do it offline and come back. All right. So you're back with all of the break statements. And so it was very tedious to copy all of them. And it also made the switch more verbose. So those are some limitations of that, like the fall through mechanism, uh, be, uh, the making the switch verbose because uh, we need to have all of these break statements and it's also tedious to write. So those are some uh, uh, limitations of switch with the, with the basic syntax and that will be addressed in the Java 14 extensions. But here what we have is this. So the only thing I want to reiterate is, let's say we forget this one, this break. Okay, and uh, if we implement, if we run this, we know what happens, right? It goes to the next case block. Okay, so for the month three, instead of spring, it is returning summer, right? We already know that that's because season is equal to spring. And after that, the control falls through to the next case block, then season is summer, then the next statement will be executed. And this time it is break, and hence we break out of the switch statement. So all these, the fall through happens until we hit the end of the switch or until we hit a break statement in one of the subsequent case statements. Okay, so that's the fall through mechanism. Okay, so if we forget like this, we may end up with, with an incorrect output as we have just seen. Okay, so this is the basic. Now here, when compared to switch, the advantage is that the intent is very clear that we are using a single variable because with switch we can use a single variable. So whoever looks at this, they know that there is going to be only one variable involved on only an equality operation and the code also looks compact and readable in most cases, but it will be much more readable, much more compact if we use the arrow labels from Java 14 or the switch expressions. Let me just show you an example how it, of how it would look like. So with the switch expression, this is the only code that we would have in that method. Okay, so this is a switch expression. So as you can see, it's very compact and very readable too. Okay, so but more on that later. So the intent is very clear and it can be much more concise and it can be much more efficient too. Because here we need to know these, these case labels at compile time itself and with that the switch can be implemented in an efficient way. By that I mean that the case label can be found in constant time. So here if month is equal to three, we can directly jump to the case label three. So we are not going to match month with one or two. Okay, so if month is three, we are going to jump to this particular case, state, case statement and we are going to execute season and we are going to exit. Okay, so that's constant time. So it's going to happen instantaneously. Even if month is 12, we will directly jump here. Okay, and we are going to execute this. So we are not going to match with any of these case labels and that is exactly what is happening with the, with the if statement. So with the if statement, it would be a linear time because we would have to execute each of these conditions. So if the month, in the worst case, if the month is outside of the range, then we would do 12 different comparisons and we would end up in this. So that is linear time, but with switch, it can get implemented in, a, in an efficient way and due to that we will have constant time complexity. So it can be, it can be efficient. So that depends upon these values also. So if these values are contiguous like this, one, two, three, four, or if there are some small gaps between them, then it is fine. So it will be implemented in an efficient way. So that's the basic syntax, okay? Uh, just one thing I want to say is after the break, we cannot have another statement because after break, we are going to exit the switch block. So this statement will never get executed and hence it will give us a compiler compilation error. Okay, let's see that. So it says unreachable statement. Okay, so you cannot have a statement following a break statement. So that's the basic syntax. And here we are using the uh, selected expression is being used to select a particular case branch. Now here the selected expression is an int. 
Now here is another example where the selected expression is a string. So month here is a string and selected expression is string and all of the case labels are also string literals. Okay, The string literals is nothing but text enclosed and double quotes and later we will look at strings in a subsequent section. So it's the exact same thing, it's just the int literals have been re replaced by uh, string literals. So this is an overloaded method and we can also invoke this okay, by passing a string. If, you know, if we pass March here, it will return uh, it will return the season spring. Okay, And uh, so that's that. But now let me change it to something else. How about let's change this to long here and let's see what happens. Oh, it says incompatible types, possible lossy conversion from long to int. The thing is the selector expression here, it cannot be long. Okay, it has certain restrictions and it can be of only certain data types like int or string or few others. Similarly, the case labels also have to be, uh, have certain restrictions. So there are, there are restrictions for the switch for the selector expressions as well as the case labels. And those restrictions are something that we will see in the next lecture. Okay, so see you in the next lecture and thank you.